Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Now in today's video I will be continuing my invasive fish series, as there is plenty of invasive fish around the world, and I've only really scratched the surface on the subject. So in this video I will be going through 5 invasive fish from around the world, and we'll start off in the fresh waters of North America, as we have the largemouth bass. Now the largemouth bass is one of the most popular and exciting game fish in North America, and it's so popular in fact, that it is the state fish of Georgia, Mississippi, Florida and Alabama, and as the largemouth bass is one of the largest bass in North America, it's easy to see why they're so highly valued by anglers, and today the world record for largemouth bass is around 22 pounds and 4 ounces, and this giant fish was around 65 centimetres or 25.6 inches long, and largemouth bass can be found in a wide range of habitats, anything from heavily vegetated lakes and ponds to fast for moving creeks and rivers, but the thing that makes them such a popular game fish can also make them a problem invasive species, as a largemouth bass is a predatory fish and will eat most things that it can fit in its mouth. As to Juvenile largemouth bass mainly feed on bait fish, water fleas and shrimp, but adults mainly consume smaller fish, worms, snails and crayfish, and their famous largemouth helps them eat these prey items, and they can be quite greedy, as they're known to eat fish up to 35% of their own body length, and in the fresh waters of North America, they fit very well into the ecosystem, as there's plenty of prey for them to feed on, but there's also plenty of predators to keep their numbers in check, but if they are introduced into an ecosystem where there aren't many large predatory fish, they can completely decimate smaller fish fish populations. And the largemouth bass isn't just invasive to certain states in the USA, as it's been exported to Central and South America, Europe, Africa, China and Japan. These fish were imported because of their popularity with anglers, and also for their use in aquaculture. And in places such as Japan, there aren't as many large predatory fish as there are in the US, so the smaller prey fish were not used to dealing with such a large active predator, resulting in their numbers declining. And since 1996, Japan's native bitterling fish have been in drastic decline since the introduction of the largemouth bass, and in Guatemala, the largemouth bass has been blamed for the extinction of the Atitlan grebe, and today the largemouth bass is such a threat to native species that many countries have a kill on sight policy to help the native species bounce back. So although it's a very popular game fish, it has the potential to be a problem invasive species as well. Before our next invasive species, we'll be travelling over to Southeast Asia as we have the climbing perch. Now the climbing perch can be found in many countries across Southeast Asia, and is normally found in slower moving habitats, such as swamps, lakes, canals and rice paddies. And in these areas the climbing perch is omnivorous, eating vegetable matter and algae, as well as smaller fishes, invertebrates and mollusks. But as they only reach a maximum size of around 20 centimetres or 7.9 inches, it wouldn't seem like they're much of a threat to an ecosystem. But the climbing perch is almost a perfect model for a successful invasive fish, because just like many fish across Southeast Asia, they have the ability to breathe atmospheric oxygen, meaning that they can live in very swampy stagnant water but they take this ability to the extreme, as not only are they known to survive up to 10 hours out of water, but they're known to deliberately jump out of the water and walk using their pectoral fins in their body to help them find another water source. And although some predators are very successful at taking out the climbing perch, they do have a few tricks to avoid becoming prey, as they have sharp spikes on the top and the bottom of their body, meaning that they're very hard to swallow for some would-be predators. And the climbing perch is also a very popular food fish, so many countries outside of its native range import this fish, and because of its walking abilities and its hardiness, it's almost too easy for this fish to spread into ecosystems where it doesn't belong. And being imported isn't the only way in which this fish is spread, as it's been reported that they have slipped onto fishing boats and eventually been transported to different countries. And today they are a problem invasive species in Indonesia and Papua New Guinea. And this has gained a lot of media attention, as if they were to reach Australia, it could have disastrous consequences for the ecosystem. Because as the native species in Australia have been separated from the rest of the world for millions of years, the introduction of an alien species can completely tip the balance of the ecosystem, and this wouldn't be the first time that it's happened, as famously the cane toad took out large populations of predators in Australia, and today the common carp is still a big problem on the continent. And although there's been some unconfirmed reports, the nearest the climbing perch has got to Australia is the Torres Strait, but hopefully the environmental agencies will stop this fish in its tracks so that it won't be able to penetrate Australia. Before our next invasive species, we'll be heading back to North America as we have the channel catfish. Now although the channel catfish isn't the largest catfish in North America, being third with the blue catfish and the flathead catfish.
catfish being larger, it is the most numerous catfish in North America, and it can still reach a pretty respectable size at around 132 centimeters or 52 inches long. And in North America, they can be found in a variety of habitats. They typically prefer clean, well oxygenated waters, but have also been found in ponds and reservoirs. And in these waters, they primarily feed on smaller fish, crustaceans, clams, and snails, but are known to be opportunistic feeders, sometimes feeding on small birds and mammals. And this predatory nature is what's made them such a problem invasive species, as it has been widely introduced into Europe, Asia, and South America, and is now legally considered an invasive species in many countries. But as it's a large, opportunistic predatory fish, it can cause a real problem in many countries. And as they prefer larger bodies of water, it can be very hard to catch them and take them out of a lake or river. But luckily, as they don't have the ability to walk on land like the climbing perch, they should hopefully be restricted to the waters that they're already in. And as there are only a few predators that can take out an adult channel catfish, it doesn't look like they're going anywhere anytime soon. Before our next species, we'll be heading down to South America as we have the Pacu. Now, there are a few species of Pacu, but they are all closely related to piranhas. But unlike the piranhas' rather scary teeth, the Pacu has surprisingly human like teeth, and this gives us a clue into their diet. As just like humans, they are omnivorous, feeding on fruits, nuts, and seeds, as well as insects and small fish. And in the wild, they're quite widespread throughout South America and usually inhabit river channels, floodplains, and flooded forests. But as some Pacu species can reach a size of a meter or 40 inches, they need a lot of food to get by. So if they're introduced into an ecosystem where they don't belong, they can eat the majority of the food supply, leaving none for the native species. And a story of the Pacu becoming invasive is very similar to many other South American fish, as although they were intentionally introduced into some parts of Asia, most invasive Pacu in the US come from the aquarium trade, as this is another famous species that it's sold very young and gets very large, as they're the classic tank busting fish, as they usually outgrow their aquariums. And although some state authorities advise you to cut the heads off your overgrown Pacu and chuck them in the garbage, many fish keepers don't want to do this and release them into the wild. And although killing your pet fish isn't very pleasant at all, releasing them into the wild causes a lot of damage. But luckily some public aquariums will take in tank busting fish and famously here on YouTube, Ohio Fish Rescue will do the same. But today there's been sightings of the Pacu in at least 35 states across the US, as well as many parts of Europe. But as this species needs a near tropical temperature, they often die off when the winter comes around, meaning that their invasion is limited. But this giant tetra can still cause a lot of problems in warmer climates. But for our next species, we'll be heading over to the Pacific as we have the pink salmon. Now the pink salmon is the smallest and most abundant species of Pacific salmon, reaching a maximum size of around 76 centimeters or 30 inches. And salmon are probably the most famous migratory species because as I'm sure many of you know, they start their lives in rivers before migrating out to sea and eventually returning to spawn. And along this life cycle, it's not easy for salmon because as they're such a fatty and protein rich fish, many predators like to take a chunk out of them, including sharks, orcas, bears, birds, and small aquatic mammals. And as they're such a popular food fish, their numbers are a lot smaller than what they used to be. So as life can be so hard for the pink salmon, it's surprising that they're actually an invasive species. And as they spend a large portion of their life in the ocean, they could technically move anywhere they wanted as all the oceans are connected. But in fact, the story of the pink salmon becoming invasive is one that is created by humans. As pink salmon were introduced into Russia in 1956 and have now spread into parts of Norway, Sweden, Ireland, and Great Britain. And in Russia, where they were first introduced, they are now the most dominant species. And there's fears that this could happen across Europe, as there are many native species of salmon that call the waters around Europe home. And the pink salmon problem is still prevalent today. As in late June of this year, a Pacific pink salmon was captured in the River Ness in Scotland. And the fishery board is asking others to be vigilant and report any sightings. And of course, to dispatch any pink salmon that are caught in British waters. And as the native salmon are under such pressure, this could be a problem for many years to come. But that's about it for this video. If you know of any other invasive fish species, then let me know down in the comments below and I might make a part five to this series. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.